Hello and welcome to season two of Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast sponsored by Salient Process. I'm your host, Jimmy Hewitt, aka Mr. Automation. So we just finished recording a long anticipated chat with someone actively changing the game for process improvement and digital business automation teams. Salient's own Automation Compass product manager, Valeria Romero Vargas, talks us through what is the game-changing tool that she and her team are building, how does it work, and how does it facilitate a flywheel approach to digital business automation. We love this tool and hope you do too. Stay tuned to the end where we announce a giveaway, and we hope you enjoy the discussion. Good morning, Valeria. Thank you for being on the show. How are you today? Happy Wednesday. Good morning, Jimmy. Happy Holi. Today is Holi celebration in India for our India team. Oh, happy Holi. So happy yeah, Holi, t- happy Wednesday. Happy Holi. Yeah, what a, what a special day um, for Holi and for us having you on the podcast. You are Salient Processes, product owner of the Automation Compass. Before we get into the Automation Compass, which I have a ton of questions for you about, I'd like to get to know you a bit better. Our audience would like to get to know you a bit better. So why don't we start there? Tell us, who is Valeria Vargas? Your background, how did you become, you know, product manager for the Automation Compass at Salient Process? Okay, I'm industrial engineer from University of Antioquia in Colombia but I was a business analyst from UCLA in California. And then starting currently studying uh, the innovation and entrepreneur program for in Harvard, online program, I have to say. And that's a little bit about my background. So working always with process improvement, in the different fields that I have been, um, it has been always around process improvement. How can we do this better? How can we uh, save money, improve, reduce hours, improve efficiency, many things. So I was really excited to, to get here when I started with Salient Process and know that Salient was working or is currently working and on a tool that helps that process to make it easier and smoother and faster. So I got excited. I started as an analyst in Salient Process and actually was the analyst for Automation Compass. Mm. Uh, the intention was kind of like to map the documentation and understanding what are some requirements that we need to put into the tool. And then I have project manage, management background as well in the projects that I have been working before. So I started then more like a project manager fashion in Automation Campus. Then slowly with all the knowledge that I was gaining about the tool and the process and the our customers or, or target public, I started to become more as product manager until we made it just official that it was a perfect fit. I was a perfect fit for that role. Amazing. Which of those backgrounds do you find yourself drawing on most on a day-to-day, week-to-week, month-to-month? You mean like, um, which is the, of the different things that I mentioned, which one is the, the one that I use the most in my day-by-day? Yep. Whether it's the industrial engineering, undergrad, or... Um, what was it at UCLA? Business analyst. Business analyst at UCLA, or what was it? Innovation and uh, entrepreneurship yes. at Harvard, or your experience, work experience as an analyst, work experience as project manager. Which of those do you draw on the most, or is it pretty spread out across all of them equally? I would say it's really a spread across all of them equally um, because it's a little bit of everything. So 
in my normal day, I'm thinking what it could be the next good fit for automation campaigns in terms of new functionalities or, and that's fully um, product manager innovation stuff. Then mm -hmm. the day by day I run the, the developers team for the actual development on automation campus. So that's project management stuff. Mm -hmm. Then of course I need to talk with different stakeholders, think about prioritization, analysis, optimization of the process for the development of the tool and that really industry engineer. Mm -hmm. And then gathering the data, gathering the benefits, gathering the um, what are the requirements that the customers need that's really um, for the analyst side. So it's a little bit of everything. That's great. Um, you never want to be just doing one thing all the time. It, it sounds like you have a, a nice setup there where you're pulling on different backgrounds, domains, disciplines. Every day is different. You're doing important work. Speaking of important work, question for you. If you had to describe what is the automation compass in two sentences, no more than two sentences, what is the automation compass in two sentences? It's automation compass is a, a framework, not just a tool, not just a solution. It's a framework that when you apply all these elements together, it helps to speed up the process of process improvement and make it easier, smoother, faster. And that's automation compass. Amazing. I like that. It's a tool and a framework. So I understand that there are three distinct modules within the automation compass. Why don't you tell us what those three distinct modules are and how did you arrive at those three? Absolutely. So let me explain first how we arrive to, to them and I, I'm going to explain them when we get there. Cool. So after interviewing many people, talking with our customers, taking the experience of our analyst team that has been working with many clients in process mapping and identifying process improvement initiatives. We identify what are the different entry points or the different steps on the journey that a, that a person can be in this process improvement journey. So it is not something wrong about any of them. It's not like you should be here and not here. It is more about um, where you are, just basically where you are, where, how your company takes this in consideration for the daily practice in the operational excellence. So they can be either like an operational excellence team that has the idea of, I want to improve the processes for my company and that's their entry point. So they are looking for the ideas in the processes, and then linking this back to the strategic. Now our second entry point could be the strategic actually triggers the initiative for process improvement. So we need to be the best in class on this particular field. So this requires for us find and implement improvements in these areas. So that's the starting from the top. And then the third idea is more like starting from the community. You have a powerful community of knowledge of your processes that is in the company. Those that are every day working in the different areas has tons of ideas of how to improve a, pro a, a process. And capturing those ideas, analyzing, analyzing them, and then connecting, connecting them with the rest of the strategic and initiative, that's our third entry point. So we identify that and then Either if you start from like a bottom bottom to top approach or that top to, top to bottom, or you usually involves the same steps that are identifying what is the opportunity, aligning with the strategic, analyzing, creating a business case, implementing the opportunity. So 
we were trying to cover all those different things inside the application when we realized that not everyone needs everything at the same time because of whatever is your practice at that time. That's why we decided to break down the tool in three different models. So, and then the model that make more sense for each of the companies is depending on what is that a starting point, where they are with the journey. So the first model, going back to your original question, what are the models? So the first model is the business architecture. The business architecture also involves levels of maturity, if you will. It means you may have a full mature business architecture practice in the company, and you may have many value streams, a value streams inventory. You may have a fully capability map decomposing in three, four levels, going into the details of the processes, details, and the steps of each process. Um, you may have already your organizational chart, value chain, mission, vision, values, objectives for the company. And that's a huge practice. And, and, and we know not everyone is there neither. But let's go like one step back, like a, like a medium level. Maybe you have the vision of like an end-to-end -end process or a value chain of your company. How, how the value starts get it transformed and get delivered to these end stakeholders that are your customers. And you have a bunch of goals or objectives that you have for your company. Those are just two more simple elements that are still part of that business architecture practice. Or in a lower level, let's say you don't have like an end-to-end -end vision or you don't have a whole capability map, but you still have goals. As a company, every company has goal, goals. That the intention of a company is to improve and survive in the time or sustain in the time and get better and uh, get more market share so those are probably basic goals that every company may have and that should drive all your decisions for where to improve how to improve so that's our first model business architecture then it also really depends on that maturity our second model is the opportunity tracking, or I call it transformation model, it means you have opportunities or you have ideas for process improvement. So the intention of this model is to analyze what is the impact of this opportunity in terms of financial terms. So ROI or payback time or benefit cost radio, depending on what are the metrics that your company cares about analyze those in terms, analyze the opportunities in terms of that financial impact, but also the soft benefits that an opportunity may have, like customer satisfaction, employee retention, uh, risk reduction, compliance. So there could be many things that an opportunity adds to your company that is not necessarily financial, that also needs to be measured and track it. Now, an opportunity has a life cycle. An opportunity gets as an idea, then it needs some review and improvement, it needs to go to, into a planning, it needs to go into a deployment, then into a monitoring stage when it's deployed, and then you close your life cycle. So this uh, model, the transformation model, the intent is to help to track the life cycle, life cycle of an opportunity. Now you may ask, what's the difference then between this model and a project management tool? It is complementary, but are not. Um, we are not trying to replace a project management tool in this particular model, because this is not project management tool. We are not creating uh, task uh, or user stories or tickets or whoever you want to call that to see how who is the responsible and who did the different steps to get it done. But we do want to track is the Capturing the ideas in a central place, how to analyze all of, all of them and prioritize them. Choose which is your next process improvement project to assign the resources. And, and that, that prioritization and that financial factor uh, aligning this with the strategic, it's something that is completely different to a project management tool. 
Now we do want to integrate with a project management tool ones that get to the state of uh, in progress. You know, like once it gets up as a project and you want to now have your IT team or your software provider to work in that new implementation. So you will need to connect the software with a project management tool. So instead of competing, we are actually um, working together. Then lastly, the third module is the um, process analyzer module, if you will. I don't have an official name for that yet. <laughs> so the process analyzer module, um, this model the intention is you may have ideas, maybe not. You you are just you just want to see what if I do this for my process, and that's I think the big thing. What if? What if I try to change this? What if I put this person here? What if I we change the order of these activities? What if we put um, a checkbox on a form that it's going to allow you to achieve more quality data quality? So it's the what if module. And if you don't know what if, what is the what if that you are looking for? So we have the discovery part on there, which is uh, help you to find what is the right automation, what is the right technology fit for your processes. And then visualize this into a simulation. So the simulation will help you to identify what are the bottlenecks and what if I change this, or is this going to change impact my process or if it's going to improve or reduce the, the efficiency or the, reduce the wait time. Uh, I don't know, many, many different um, scenarios that you can simulate and you can quantify to see what are the results of those different ideas of improvement. Now, those three models can work independently based on your needs, but when those, the three of them work together, it gets a really powerful um, practice framework tool for accelerate the process improvement journey. Wow, amazing. I can't wait to ask you about what that practice looks like. I think that's the flywheel methodology. I'm going to ask you about that, but let me summarize what we just went over. Um, Automation Compass in one or two sentences is not just a tool, but also a framework that makes the process of process improvement and digital business automation easier, faster, smarter. Did I get that right? Yes. Okay. How does it do that? It accommodates three entry points based on where you, the process improvement or digital business automation team, are at. There is no right or wrong answer to what's the best of the three. It just is what it is. Whether it's top down, start with your business architecture, or bottom up, start with your idea, management, and analysis. You also have somewhere in the middle where it's process level analysis simulation, whatever your starting point is, we have three entry points for the automation compass. So whichever one is most aligned to where your team is at on its process improvement or digital business automation journey, you have a choice to make which of those three, you know, is right for you. All right, we got it. Cool. That was a thumbs up for the listeners out there. <laughs> um, okay, so how does the method work? What is this flywheel concept that that I hear you talking about? And maybe how does it relate to the three distinct modules? Okay, let's clarify first, what is a flywheel? I don't know if this is a common concept for all the listeners. So sure. let's make that clear first. Picture in your head like a really heavy metal wheel, like a gear could be, think about a huge one, really okay, heavy. Okay, so my mind is going to the Price is Right, where the contestants have to spin this big, large wheel, and it goes around and around and around. And there's a, a number that the arrow eventually stops on. It, it, is yeah. that 
what you That's mean. And sometimes the users, perfect. they can only do so much on their first pull. Maybe it moves a foot, but then they get some momentum going and they eventually can really spin this, this thing. That's a perfect example. Now, picture that in your mind, but yeah, like a really heavy wheel. The one that you mentioned for the price is right. Yeah. So the really first time that you are going to try to spin that wheel, it's going to take a lot of energy to move the wheel. Now you do a first push and probably it's really slow, just starting mm -hmm. to move. And it's going to be hard to make the wheel do like a full spin. Mm -hmm. So then you keep pushing or you go for a second intent and because it already has some sun momentum going, it's going to be a little bit more easier to make the the wheel spin. Mm -hmm. Then if you keep pushing, it's going to get every time easier and the spin is going the wheel is going to spin faster and faster every time until it is just spinning. It just has momentum. It builds momentum every time that you push and it gets every mm -hmm. time faster and faster and faster. That's a flywheel. Yeah, who doesn't want that flywheel concept for their business? <laughs> exactly. And that's the perfect analogy for this process improvement journey. So for companies that doesn't have this practice already implemented in their company, it is hard to start. It has a lot of friction. And that first push is always going to be hard. So mm -hmm. the intention of this methodology that it, I call it the process improvement flywheel, it's to get it started that first push and every time you go through the you you go through the spin of the wheel it's going to get faster and faster and faster and easier and easier so that's how our methodology works then where do you start yeah so, what what is that first push how how do we operationalize this process improvement flywheel yes so the first thing is capture where are those ideas? Where are those pain points? And I can ensure that there is so many people out there that is willing to talk and willing to give you the ideas for process improvement. Either if it's the managers, either on the production floor, if you go out there and talk with people, they are going to say, oh yes, this is so painful, or this is so slow, or this is so difficult, or time consuming mm -hmm. every day. And I think that if we do something like this, it could be better. And they have the expertise. Mm -hmm. So it is not like getting ideas out of the pocket, uh, out of the hat. It is mm -hmm. actually just going to talk with people and then you capture the ideas. Yeah. That will get get us with a bunch of new ideas now sure. the second the second step is how do i align these ideas with my strategic so again if we keep it really simple let's go with that level one of business architecture which means let's connect with your goals as i mentioned earlier a company has goals it could be really simple or maybe you can capture the goals for that particular department. Is their goals or to accomplish the uh, on-time production, or is their goals to process these many bills by month? Even if you don't have those strategic goals that are company-wide, you can still capture goals for whatever you are focusing your effort. Mm -hmm. Now, if you have many departments that you are working with, it means you also need to prioritize which department you are going to focus. And this is also part of the strategic alignment step. How to prioritize the, the, how to prioritize the department? It happens using, depending on what you have. What is the data that you have available? Do you have a customer journey map? Okay, where is the sad phase on your customer journey map? Let's find the ideas that we had for that specific area and 
that particular area may have a specific goals mm -hmm. or connecting with the company wise goals. But we need some criteria for decision. Right. Okay. Now you know that the ideas that you collect are aligning with those particular areas that are more painful, but mm -hmm. also those areas that will give you more impact to your goals. This is the step of connecting with the strategic. It means we are going to focus on ideas that will provide a high gain and will solve a lot of pain. That sounds great. You set, you collect ideas, you align those ideas to the goals, whether they are overarching corporate goals like cut costs or add top line revenue or achieve long-term sustainable profitability or departmental goals like increase the capacity for onboarding new customers by 50% at existing staffing levels as a weirdly specific departmental goal uh, or whatever your goals are. Align the ideas and opportunities you collect to the goals. Not just align them, but do a little bit of analysis, effort, impact, pain, gain, so that the prioritization of those ideas in line with those goals starts to happen at a relatively low level of effort. Okay, I can see the flywheel starting to move. That's a lot of friction, getting those goals written down, established, collecting those ideas, aligning those ideas to the goals, assigning pain gain. I can see the flywheel starting to move. How does it, what does the third and fourth push on this flywheel look like? Our first step you just mentioned, because it's a really natural step and it's prioritized. Mm -hmm. so you have 10 ideas that are in this particular department or this particular area of our customer journey. And how do I know which one should I go next? So prioritizing the ideas is a really important step because it really depends on what is the strategic of the company. So if your company is already in a really mature position for process improvements initiative, so you may go with a initiative that is, it requires a lot of effort, but also delivers a lot of value. Mm. Or for those that we are just starting to give this first push, the recommendation is fine or quick wins. That lower hunger fruit that is just ready to be picked. Mm -hmm. So we have different, uh, let's say, questionnaires or criteria for evaluate and prioritize the opportunities, sorry, the ideas. Mm -hmm. And then how to visualize them, what is my next quick, quick win, what is the next opportunity that I should be focused depending of my strategy. Then our fourth push there will be implementation. Now, you may have here about analysis paralysis. Mm. I think that's the name in English. Sure. So if we are stay trying to find what are all the, let's say, all the processes that are in this department. So we start to do a huge mapping effort. I mean, do mapping for your processes is a really good thing because it gives you the visualization and conscientiousness of where are the activities and efforts and people impacting mm -hmm. on the different areas of the company. But the intention is to take action on those efforts and move it to the next to the next step that is improve it and implement. So you select, you prioritize your ideas, you select what is the alignment with the strategic, prioritize it, then let's create that business case for implement your idea. We capture already what is the assist and the to be of your process. What are the different, what is the benefit, the yearly benefit that you can achieve by doing those changes? What are the soft benefits that you can achieve? Then let's go ahead and implement it. You may find at this point a no brainer idea, no brainer opportunity. At this point, it's mm -hmm. already an opportunity. So 
you have a compelling business case that already have all what you need because it's connecting with the painful areas on the company and providing an impact on your goals. So it's a no brainer opportunity. We love no brainers. I would imagine that the no brainers start to add on top of each other and they will rack up enough value in line with those goals, be it cost removal or revenue gains, profitability, customer experience, employee experience, compliance, whatever it may be, they'll start stacking on top of each other. You can keep track of the results, the actuals in the automation compass, and you can see how the flywheels just gaining more and more momentum as this methodology plays out on this tool that you have ownership for. Val, I know you have a stand up or a sprint or something to go do here. I've really enjoyed this conversation. I'd like to leave our audience with a special offer. If you're listening and you've made it this far in the podcast, the Automation Compass special guest with Val uh, Vargas on product management, we have an offer for you. Go check out Automation Compass. You can Google it. You can check it out on our website, Salient Process, or you can just Google Salient Process Automation Compass. Click on free trial. Anyone between now, time of recording is Wednesday, March 8th. This episode is going to be published on Tuesday, Tuesday the 14th. 14. Um, anybody who creates a free trial between Tuesday the 14th um, and one month out, so March 14th to April 14th, will be put into a raffle or a drawing and we will work with you on this methodology. We will help you collect an idea. We will help you map a process. We will help you establish your business architecture, whichever of the three modules or entry points you are. We will make the first couple of pushes on this flywheel for you. Um, the offer stands, encourage you to go create a free trial and we will put you in the drawing or raffle for doing this alongside you. We will work with you on the method. Okay, that's our offer. And I'm excited to see who wins the raffle. And we will announce the winner on an upcoming episode. How exciting is that? So it's amazing. Hope you see many people coming and registering for that free trial. Looking forward to seeing who wins and seeing what the goals are, what the ideas, opportunities are, and getting them started on their process improvement journey. Thank you again, Val. This has been an awesome conversation. Thank you, Jimmy. Thanks for listening to another episode of Bots and Thoughts, the hyper automation podcast sponsored by Salient Process. Be sure to never miss an episode by hitting that subscribe button wherever you're listening to this. Don't forget to connect and interact with us. You can find us on Bots and Thoughts' own LinkedIn page. And we're constantly running feedback surveys and ask that if you've made it this far in the episode, show us some love by responding to a survey and following us on LinkedIn. Finally, if you or someone you know would like to be a special guest on the show, we have a nomination form also down in the description for you to fill out. And with that, see you next episode and happy automating.